being fearless. Love this topic with my new friend, Judge Rosemary Aquilina, Rosie, being fearless is, is her in her DNA. It's part of who she is. And that's why she's going to be coming on the radio program to help men and women, women and men understand that you can do whatever you want to do in this life. I mean, and that's, we come from similar backgrounds. Okay. So Rosie, let's get back to the story here because you're talking about your early childhood and how it formed you into the fighter that you are, how resilient you are with your, um, with your, with your parents and your dad going into med school and two children and please continue that thread. So my grandparents did everything for me and children. What I have learned from all of this through my life is that you really need to have a talk with your children at every age, explain things to them. I was not explained. And I was told, well, I was a stupid child because I should have known that my parents were my parents and my grandparents were my grandparents. Well, children learn from the surroundings and my grandparents did everything for me. I had uncles who were calling them mom and pa. I thought they were my mom and dad. So when my dad comes home from medical school and we are packed in a car, my brother and I and my mother, and all my things are there, I feel kidnapped. No one has explained to me through this whole time. I was now about four or five years old. I was ready for kindergarten. And we drove away. And I felt kidnapped. Now, this isn't just a feeling that you can explain, oh, well, you were wrong. Here's the real story. That feeling of being kidnapped has been a feeling, a trauma for my whole life. How have things changed from then till now? And then what tips would you give to these young women um, in, in the undergraduate phase? And then we'll talk about graduate school once we get done with that. What what kind of tips would you give to the young women that you've come across? Because you obviously, obviously, we haven't talked about the Nasser case at all yet, but obviously your name is pretty well known out there. You're very connected with, with the young women out there. What is your advice to young women? When I was in undergrad, I was told, well, you probably shouldn't walk alone at night. Maybe somebody will walk you. The same problems that exist today at Michigan State existed when I was in undergrad in the 70s. And, but they weren't talked about. And we didn't have the resources. And I was very unaware. I knew in my head, stay away from drugs. There were a lot of drugs. There was a lot of drinking. I knew that I didn't want to compromise my mental ability in any way. I wanted to always be whole and present because without that, I felt less than, and I don't like feeling less than. So I stayed away from those things. Uh, I did that on my own because of who I am, because I wanted to succeed, because I didn't want anything like that to bring me down. I think that today things haven't changed much. And certainly we have the opportunity for cameras. We have the opportunity for education about sexual assault, about, yes, get somebody to walk. You don't walk alone. Don't walk with strangers. Don't walk with earbuds. We didn't have those in the seventies, but we had other things. We carried loud music and we, you know, were pretty fearless about where we we're going to walk on campus. And we should have had that fear because there were a lot of rapes in campus and there still are, there are still a lot of problems. I think the advice that I would have is to be open about what's happening. Talk to people. Don't be afraid to speak up. If you see someone being bullied, if you think that you're in an all female dorm and there's men there and they shouldn't be there, speak up. It's okay to not follow the crowd, to have somebody say, well, you're a narc. You're, you tell on us, we don't like you. That's okay. Because we always have to think about safety first and speaking up for others. Every single time, you speak up. There is somebody else who wanted to say it, but was not able to. And this generation has lost the ability to really speak up. They speak through technology. And I'm seeing that loss as a professor, as a judge, as a mom. And I feel like I had that loss in college and undergrad because we didn't have the intuitiveness, the training. We weren't allowed to talk about sex and other things very openly. And we should be talking about those things because we all have body parts. We're all sexual people. There's crime all around us. There are good people and bad people. And we have to have these conversations for the safety of the rest of our life. 
when you said the line feeling less than judge, I'd, I'd like you to kind of think about expanding on that because that's a, that's a feeling that kind of resonated with me. I'm not exactly sure why, but because, you know, as you get put down and pushed down and kept down, can you expand on that a little bit for the young people that are out there, men and women, women and men feeling less than and how they can avoid feeling less than? Yeah. Feeling less than is when someone really bullies you or taunts you into taking another drink, using drugs, uh, wearing something that you might not want to, going somewhere you might not want to. And they make you feel like somehow you are wrong, that you are less than they are. And actually, when you keep your po your power and you say, no, this is what I choose to do, you actually keep your power. You are more than you own who you are. When you are less than someone else is usurping who you are, you become their follower. You should always be the leader in your life. And then you are more than you should not compromise yourself. When you feel less than you're compromising something that you hold important because someone else has told you something and you feel they're more important. Well, that's wrong. You are the most important person in your life. You drive the bus. You own the bus. Don't let somebody else drive your bus. You have a professor come up. Please, for people that just joined us, can you recap that? We'll just continue on with that thread. Sure. I, I'm sitting down and this professor comes to me and bends over and whispers in my ear, how does it feel to have all the men looking at you again? And I was literally dumbfounded. And then he walked away and I froze. I've never forgotten it. And my older self would have said, tell the Dean, tell the Dean now, <laughs> but it wasn't done in those days. And it didn't even occur to me. I'd had no conversations or training about that. He didn't touch me. He just said this really raunchy thing to me. And in this voice that was horrifying. And, you know, I've thought about it over the years and I've thought, I wish I would have said something. How many women did he do that to? You went into the military, you got a 20 year career in the military. I'm curious to see how, how that came to be because, and you had a, a cool story from the Ted talk on that one too. So can you, let's, let's, let's shift gears here from the <laughs> academia side of things of the judge, judge Rosemary Aquilina's life and being fearless to the military side of things. What, what possessed you and tell us some of that, that part of your life, please. Yeah. So my uncle Chuck was on the USS Bainbridge. And when, when I was a small child and he would come home to Nunu and Nunna's house, he would be in this really cool uniform. And he always brought me some toy from around the world. And my brother and I didn't have many toys. We were very poor. And so I just thought, this is the coolest thing ever. And then there were pictures of my father who was in the, had been in the U.S. Army in his cool military uniform. So from a very young age, you know, I was a couple of years old. I thought, I got to wear those uniforms. I got to be in the military. And so I always, I never said anything about it. It was just something that was on my bucket list. So when I was in high school and they had those career days, I went to Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. And all my friends said, that's just you, Aquilina, always making trouble. I said, no, that's, I'm going to do this. And everyone said, yeah, no. And, you know, they're going to doctor, nurse, teacher, whatever. And I just stuck with the military. And then I went to college and I did not do ROTC because I thought, you know what, I don't know what exactly is going to happen in my life, but no one's going to make me contractually obligated to something if I change my mind. Judge, how would you like to have people connect with you, speaking engagements, books, whatever you'd like to talk about? Please go ahead, promote so whatever. I'm yeah, I'm represented by Creative Artists Agency. They can reach out to them. They can also contact my office. I'm have a email of my personal email is author aquilina at gmail.com or work is raquilina at ingham.org. I have a website that's being worked on right now, but it should be up shortly. It's aquilinawarriors.com. I have a number of products. I have affirmation playing cards for various, uh, uh, for children, for adults, for positivity. I have um, puzzles for healing, for trauma, sexual assault, uh, divorce, all sorts of things like that. I have a number of books, Just Watch Me, my memoir, All Rise, Triple Cross Killer, Feel No Evil, my thrillers, a couple more are coming out. And I just broke a 
a new book, which has created a new genre called, um, I just reverse here, but uh, car wash art and daily affirmations. I go through car washes. I take pictures and put affirmations and it's just a fun little hobby, but people are really enjoying it. So I have a lot of products. I have a lot of things. I do speaking engagements all over the world. If you need a speaker, I'm there for you. I also, if you read my books, whether it's on Zoom because of distance or in our general area, I'm happy to talk to book clubs. Love doing that. We have great fun, just like we're having today. Thanks for having me on the show. There are two quotes that I pulled from your TED Talk yesterday, Judge. Failure is a teachable moment in your life. I hope I got that correctly. Failure is a teachable moment in your life. And secondly, being fearless is contagious. Would you please comment on those two quotes from your TED Talk? I hope I got them right. You got them right. Yes. Every single time you fail, you have to look at how, why did I fail? Okay. E examine it and then say, I'm going to do better next time. I'm going to change this little thing. And then the next time you do succeed, that is how Colonel Sanders became Kentucky fried chicken. You know, he reinvented that recipe so many times. And for me, he's been motivational to me because that's been that mantra where you can fail, but you know what? You succeed the next time and the next time, every little step you take forward is a success. Even if it's a failure, the only failure is in stopping. And then, um, I don't remember what was the other quote you pulled. Being fearless is contagious. Uh, it's contagious because when people see me succeed and I get letters from all over the world saying, you did it, I'm going to do it. You are my motivator. So people around you will also want to be fearless. They will want to be you. And I always tell people, be yourself. Don't be me. Having guests like Judge Rosemary Aquilina is why we do this radio program. I mean, so full of great great tips and ideas and things that she's overcome. Everybody that is successful, everybody that is successful has gone through some shit in their life. And I am absolutely going to second that, third that, fourth that, because it is what happens. Life is hard, but life is great because life is hard. And I'm going to leave it there. So thanks again to Judge Rosemary Aquilina for being my guest today. I hope you enjoyed that one, everybody. You know how we do this. Subscribe, like, do all of the good things. Thanks again to Vanessa for doing all the video stuff behind the scenes and Mitch for doing all the stuff on the audio side of things. Sandy for doing all the planning and all of that. And to our guests, I just talked. Peace out. Love y'all. Have a great day. <laughs>